So this is the first morning of our safari here. So what they do is these Nyala come out of the mountains in the late evenings and they go down and uh, kind of go into the people's fields and feed all night and then move back out in the early hours of the morning. So we're going to go and see and try and catch them in this valley that they use. Um, see, if, see what we're going to see in there. Pretty exciting stuff. The furthest shot probably going to be about 400 yards but more than likely within 250 type of thing. You're going to do a lot, a lot, a lot of glassing. That's how you do the mountain yard, I'd say. Just to the right of the little tree. So this is the first mountain yard that we've seen on the first morning. I've got two bulls here and this one cow. This one bull Terry said he's probably about 30 inches. But uh, it's just amazing to me how well they blend in. Like I said, they're about 130 yards out. Shoot him when you're ready, Chad, when he stops. So, hold on. Good job, man. Good job, man. I saw Sasai look here and his face just lit up. He was like... <laughs> yeah, Andy. We got the Niana. Yeah. I reckon that's... It doesn't matter how many inches he is. He's a flipping beautiful bull, but I reckon he's... Close to mid-30s. Close. I can't believe it. First morning. Yes. yes. Look at this thing. This thing. <laughs> <Hey>? <laughs> now this is exactly what I've always dreamed of. Proper. Jeez. <laughs> this is a nice pull. Look at the neck on this thing, the body. These are much bigger than I thought they were. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Big body. Yes. Big body. Yes. Chad, that is a flipping phenomenal bull. That's a proper mountain the yala right there, right? It is. Well done, Chad. Thank you again, well done. man. Well done. All you guys well done. doing in operations. Thank you very much, inside. Obviously, uh, you can you can tell that this is a very good nyala from the minute we saw him, you know. He's got a big bell, you know, what we call the bell is as it comes off the head, it, it kind of bells around like that, comes back together. And he's got a big bend in his horns, which obviously helps right. um, to get a few extra inches. But more importantly than that, he's he's a very old nyala. You can see he's worn off a bunch of his tips. He's got the mass. Couldn't couldn't have asked for anything better, no. to be honest. And that's why, you know, we were talking last night, saying we're not going to shoot the first one unless unless he's really magnificent. <laughs> and uh, well, thankfully we we right. did pass up one Obviously that was young and marginal and yeah. what have you but but yeah. yeah magnificent you could hunt you know you could hunt more nyalas in the future and to get one like this is going to be tough to beat <laughs> 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 
Fuck, I'm like falling in love yeah. with him. The not, way he's not, at, at not at him, back, not back at him. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> but hang on, hang on, that is wank. No, that's square, bro. Hey? Eh? It's perfect. I'll do it again. Do it again. Salt and the pepper. Wine. Red wine. Soy sauce. And again, rosemary, fresh rosemary. On his way back to his bed, he didn't think he was going to end up on a plate. <laughs> Fresh. Look at this, nice, nice, nice. Is that one of the most expensive steaks you've ever had? Or? $55,000 steak. <laughs> we have to make some more of this. Very good. Mm. <laughs> got a pretty good crew of guys here. We got about a dozen guys and fortunate enough we were able to bring these horses up. So it's been about two, two and a half hour journey across. So what's your horse's name, Chadwell? This is Mrs. B. Mrs. B. Yes. Um today we've come over here on the other side of the mountain, a little bit better bush buck, you know, kind of terrain. Um better forest, better trees. Um so we're gonna come over here today and kind of spend the day hunting. Bush buck, and hopefully we'll find a nice Menelix bush buck, which is probably one of the tougher bush buck species to, to harvest. something every day. That's all Terry knows about primates. <laughs> Did you know that? I thought they I thought they laid eggs in the nest. <laughs> you see, hang around people like me and you'll know things but
run up there, Chad, and keep him covered. He's down. He's down. He's down. Let's go up. Let's see him up there. Oh my God, boy. What a good shot. He's made it tight. Very, very nice one. Well done. Good well done, bud. Good job. Well done. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah. Quite furry. Yeah, it is. Awesome. Nice shot, Chad. Not easy. Nice. Patience paid off. Some awesome, awesome. Is that a big bush buck? Nice bush buck. Eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> would very much have you got a good taxidermist, don't yeah. you? They're going to have to fix that. Not an easy shot, huh? No, no, no. That was one of the tougher shots in a while. Wasn't that far. 75, 80 yards. Just didn't realize really how small the body did were. And just nothing clear at all. I mean, all I could really, the only thing I could use to, to even know that there was a pushbuck there was just that he had horns. <laughs> Other than the horns kind of moving in the sun, I couldn't see a whole lot of anything. So anyway, well, we got it done. got two of the difficult ones done you know here in the mountains so uh, Menelix Bushbuck and Mountain Yala so uh, we've had a good start so far. Menelix uh, Bushbuck is definitely one of the most uh, sought after bushbucks. Yes. Um, can only find it in the Ethiopian mountains. Okay. Uh, yeah. It worked out well. I'm a bit concerned watching uh, Sasai put some fuel in the tank before we start this hike up the mountain. Yes! yes. <laughs> Yeah, that sandwich is supposed to be for the four of us and society. <laughs> society took a look at our chassis and thought <laughs> those boys don't need it. Save them the hurt. Have you eaten? No, we haven't. He looks real worried too, doesn't he? <laughs> I'm ready now to go back. This has kind of been a, one of those trips we've been looking forward to for a long time, but obviously the first trip I've done without Mish and it's been kind of a difficult one. Obviously priorities, she had to stay home and couldn't make it for this trip. But anyway, miss you babe, love you. And uh, we'll see you hopefully back at home soon. So we'll uh, we'll make the next trip, babe, love you. So we are on our way to the giant forest hog area and there has been a storm. So we can't access the roads. So we are staying at this hotel called the Raz Hotel. So let's check on our our fellow hunting companions. How is Chadwell? This is where the, the outside looks quite nice, not bad. We've got poolside rooms, not bad. Hey, what's happening? What's, what's the story? What's the load down here, guys? Uh, yeah, come on in. This is the, this is the mess. This is the shower. And uh, at least we got hot water. He doesn't know how to flush his toilet yet. Yeah. There's no handle for the toilet, so. <laughs> <laughs> there is no handle on here. No, it's no handle whatsoever. The walls are clean at least. Yeah. And I brushed my teeth a minute ago but I dropped my toothbrush into the shower pan. <laughs> <laughs> is that I think that's the toilet paper. That's your towel. Oh, is this for showering? There's your that's how you flush your toilet and you dump it in there. Oh, that's the toilet water, okay. I got it. Nice. At least we can see ourselves after a couple of days. Here's the nice room. A pair of garden linen, nice fluffy pillows. But oh, yeah. hey guys, it is all part of the experience, eh? part of the adventure. The good thing is I brought my sports sandals so I can take my shower. Yeah, this is the... Oh, we've got TV. Yeah. A lacquer 19 inch Sony from 1980. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, at least could be worse, you could be sharing with Terry, eh? <laughs> Might as well be. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. I'd hate to see what the cheap rooms are like. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are courtyard. Tell us the situation. Well, we're finally getting out of town, slowly but surely, but uh, headed to another area, so. We, uh, as always, the, the trek and the drive is about half the battle here, especially in Ethiopia, but it's definitely eye-opening. So, but uh, hopefully another hour and a half, two hours, we'll be in camp. I'm sure the rest of the crew's already got everything set up, so we'll be hunting through the 
afternoon. And uh, we'll, we'll see if Terry's got to pay his debt today. So hopefully so. So last night we drank uh, two crates of beer and the hotel had to restock today. But uh, we, uh, Terry and I came up with a bet that uh, I said we're going to shoot the giant forest hog today, this afternoon. Um, Terry says we're going to shoot it tomorrow or any time from tomorrow. So he's been very vague on his, on his uh, bet. I just said we won't shoot it today and the benefit that I have is, you know, I get to make the call on what's shootable or not. <laughs> so it's I think my money is pretty safe. But I, I don't play like that, you know, I'm a free player. If we see a good one, it's going down today. I'm going to share my winnings with Cisse if we shoot the giant forest hog today. So I'm hoping that Cisse is going to try his utmost to get us a giant forest hog today because really I can't afford to be paying someone who's already very wealthy a hundred dollars. <laughs> Beautiful country, yeah. Let's see what happens. Nothing like rocking up the camp right in the middle of the rainstorm. I believe the rain is good for pigs. Money, money, money. A little extra hundred bucks here and there <laughs> never hurt anybody. Chad's got COVID. In Ethiopia. <laughs> <laughs> it's COVID times. Um, sharing is caring. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's that culmination of the drainage of my throat and sinuses, but I feel it today. So, so we've got about six, seven hours to shoot a pig. <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> I got money in the bank. Just rocked up here to camp. We ain't even got the cruiser unpacked yet. I mean, everything. And uh, here we are. They've, they've spotted a big pig down here just below camp. So they're calling for us. So load some swift ammo up, grab the 375, and here we go. We're going to go down and see what we got. That's how it goes here in Ethiopia. <laughs> I can smell my meat. I thought I nearly had my money there, but I still have a chance. It's only one o'clock. <laughs> what are you doing? So imagine if I was just doing whatever, you know? <laughs> if I was dressing Kalkhat, what would you do, Shay? Terry, tell me, what is the time? The time is quarter past three. In the um, afternoon? In the afternoon, so... We so got why, here, we saw some... So wait, so why are you sleeping? I'm not sleeping. I, I, I feel some match fixing going on here. <laughs> I'm thinking of a game plan. Um, just to try and secure that 100 bucks for myself. I think it seems to be working so far, so good. <laughs> we'll go put a little exercise in. I need to wake up. I'm feeling tired today. <laughs> One ball. Not 
we tried. One zero. One zero. <laughs> Terry win. <laughs> we lost, me and you, we lost. <laughs> Let's go. Just woke up this morning, didn't, didn't feel that great, but felt a lot better this morning than I do now. Anyways, the day's gone on, it just, I got a lot of sinus pressure and kind of getting into my throat and down in my chest now, so, you know, hopefully not, I'll get back. Uh, just makes it hard to walk and keep my balance or anything, so go back tonight, maybe make a hot toddy, maybe a tea or something, see if I can get something, see if I can feel much better tomorrow, I'm sure I will. Seems like I might have to pay him. Pay money. Never fun losing a bet, but you know, we could have shot any pig, but we want a big pig. And we will get a big pig. So, looking forward to tomorrow. Hopefully, Chad's feeling better. This morning, we'll be looking for the cousin of our assistant professional hunter, Terry Labatt. It's a <laughs> black and white monkey. Same the behavioral cousin. patterns, everything. <laughs> Should be easy. That's cool. We'll, we'll show you the cousin of Terry Labat. When do we look for the cousin of Sasai? In the Danakil. In the Danakil. That will be... Hamadreas. Hamadreas, yeah. These are obviously, um, you know, swift breakaway solid. So on these monkeys, we're just trying to punch one nice, neat little hole and try to protect as much of the cape as we can. Hopefully these are... One's all we're going to need, but we're going to load two just in case. So we've got, we've got a big colobus monkey here. That, uh, one of the biggest ones we've seen since we've been here. So we're just trying to make sure that he's a big male. And uh, we've just seen confirmation, so you can leave your mind wondering what confirms that. But uh, now she's trying to get a, a shot. I mean, the angle and everything, it's not real easy. So we'll just be patient and uh, hopefully here in a minute or so we'll get a clear opportunity. Down. Yes, we were, must have waited for him for like an hour. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Good job. I think the four actually killed him. Great on starting, though. That's smart. But in the last time, like that swift breakaway, he seemed pretty good. So. <laughs> Certainly did the job. Down. Down. The colobus monkey, believe it or not, is a very common monkey here in Ethiopia. As with everything else in Ethiopia, there's not a lot of quota. So, Chad, congratulations. Thank what you. a good shot you made on this. It was a bit tricky at times. There was sunlight and monkey business yeah. was <laughs> taking us a bit of time. Eh? No, and he definitely knew what, what our intentions were. So, it did. Trying to get the shot right and just be patient and, uh, you know, wait for everybody to kind of give the thumbs up that, hey, you know, this one's okay to take. Down. Down. So. No more bets from me. I'm, I'm out the betting. I should have bet on monkey first day, hey? <laughs> first day? You would have lost Hazel. No, no. First day. monkey day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry about your cousin there, Terry. Ah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, Terry. Have a look at this.
еще. Nice pig, bud. Biggest of the uh, wild pigs in the mm -hmm. world, eh? It's and you got a good pig. one at that. Well done, bud. Yes. Hey? Please look at the hair on this thing. So that shot actually went through his. Mm, these are the dust that you. Like yeah, you're looking for. Mm. Clip through his ear. ear. <laughs> so I mean, when you're judging these things, I mean, you're looking obviously for tusk, but I mean, obviously the disc on her face is what just kind of the, the yeah. age of them. So the old males. And dominant male type okay. thing. Okay. It's to protect their eyes from. from I hear fight. tradition is when you shoot one of these, your pH is supposed to eat that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We're running out of light here. We're going to have to skin them out here yeah. um, and take a couple of photos, so we need to get going. Well, thank you guys. We are leaving the, the, the mountainous areas of Shadim and we are heading towards the Great Good area, but we have rain on the horizon and the roads are terrible. Terrible, just slidey slidey, so let's see. This bus has slid, got stuck across the road here. Yeah. You can't really go around them because there's a big drop off there. The situation is, this is happening. We have to think of something. Let's go! <laughs> well, the wind's pumping this afternoon, but we're in a new area here and we're looking for uh, these Abyssinian reed buck, which is basically the same as you get kind of, you know, even in Western Africa as well, um, just a boho reed buck. But uh, anyway, we're here. There's just fields upon fields upon fields of agriculture here so there's thousands of these reed buck here so let's try and look at as many as we can see that one laying in the bush there yeah is it? yeah i have seen that yeah okay and also the one he's now on the left i think that one in the bushes is a little bit better yeah look at all those reed bucks in the background uh -huh. the one on the left also <sighs> spoiled for choice very confusing, to say the least. It's a lot easier when you just see one good one. See, look this one. Yeah, he looks probably brighter than this one. Yeah. You see? This, look this one. Okay, you drain a battery and you're looking at uh, reed buck. Off on, off on, off on. <laughs> this is like hunting antelope in Texas. That's very important part yeah. of your whole safari kit that you come with and the thing is with these sticks i've been shooting off these sticks for probably 12 13 14 years now and uh anywhere i go my sticks go with me if you aim on this you don't miss huh i agree o only one That's one shot i yeah. agree you got a 300 here shooting 180 grain swift rocco bullet so we'll uh work out across this plane here and hopefully these reed buckle hole without spooking. So try to get a nice shot. Just take your time until he give you his shoulder well. you in a wind like this I mean this winds probably pumping 20 to 30 miles an hour and I mean, we were about probably about 115 yards but I tell you those sticks from African sporting creation I mean they're rock solid I didn't have any problem at all but, uh, to be able to get steady on those sticks I've used them for years and years years and I truly recommend them for any safari kid for any safari whether it's dangerous game or even some of the plains game like here in Ethiopia today so once again, let's walk up here and we'll check out what we got. Ethiopia. This is uh, just a boho reed buck, but uh, some call it the Abyssinian. Like I said, there were thousands of them. Pretty markings on them, a little black fronted on the legs on them. But uh, this is a very, very nice male here. Good thick basis. Um, 
nice tips on him, curves up well. So, I mean, this is what you're looking for here. So, but uh, good eating. And uh, once again, this is just another stop that's why Ethiopia hunting is. You cover lots and lots of ground and uh, spend a lot of time in the car, but all these areas are different and unique. Next area we've got here for uh, Abyssinian kudu, um, which is a, a greater kudu species, but obviously smaller than what most people are, you know, expecting from southern greater kudu. We hope to find something, you know, in the high 40s, mid 40s, um, but uh, I'm sure we'll have a good hunt there in the morning, and then we'll be hunting hyena there as well too. <laughs> He says it seems like we're always climbing every step we make. We've come to this place, this kind of like valley here. Uh, we're looking for the Abyssinian Greater Kudu. It's the only place in the world you can hunt them as an Ethiopia. So. It's pretty exciting stuff and it's a new adventure. We've seen, uh, we haven't been here 15 minutes already, we've seen about five females and a young bull. I think it's just a matter of time and glassing and stuff like that before we, we manage to find a, what we're looking for. You hit him here, yeah, but it's quartering in. Yeah. It's a good looking bull, eh? Very good. Nice. Yeah, very no, he's very nice bull. Nice and tight. Jeez, that happened nice quick. Curls. Come over that top of that hill. I'm glad he stopped following the females until yeah, they fixed up there. We would have lost him. That's quick, though. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have time to range him. I just, I thought, ah, he's fine. He's, oh, he's within the 300. Yeah, what else yeah. That's what's nice about shooting a 300 wind mag. You've got that point blank range out there pretty good ways. Take your time. Let's go follow up, take tracks on this pool. I think we're in good shape. It's on high ground, I don't know. Okay. Can just see it. okay, I'll follow you. I tell you, you can't one shoot, bull, right? one kill all of them, but uh, man, that is a well, freaking hell of a bull. Jeez. That's exciting. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Jeez. Took us three shots to get him. I tell you, that's one thing you can't ever, you can't ever truly appreciate is a big kudu bull here, especially here in Ethiopia. These Abyssinian kudu, I mean, there's not many or they get what four permits a year, so I mean this is a this is a pretty unique uh, moment here. So guys are already down there to him, so we'll walk down there and check him out. Yes, check out this thing. Hey, what a proper bull! Old tight curls, beautiful tips. 
got everything you look for. Eh? It took us a couple shots, but man, I mean, beautiful. You ask for a yes. more beautiful bull. Look at this thing, man. <laughs> proper, right proper old bull. Nice it's shape too. Eh? Yes. Worn. Look at all his ears are all yeah. torn up and yeah. very well done. <laughs> well done. Man, I couldn't ask for anything anymore. Thank you very much. I'm well truly done. blessed. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you to you. all your team. use the trophy uh, I mean the meat to hunt for hyena right here so spotted hyena let's see what happens a couple little houses and stuff some guys live here that said there's always always a pretty good clan of hyenas here so they're welcoming us to come in and maybe do a little damage to the population so I mean it's 12 20 in the afternoon this is kind of unheard of with hyena especially back in southern Africa and Zim but anyway we'll follow their advice and uh, hopefully we'll Get a nice hyena today as well too. We're gonna get one. Yeah. <laughs> it's now quarter to five in the evening and uh, we've snuck in, in in here and there's actually a leopard that's off to the side about 20 yards from our bait which is pretty cool so if the leopard goes there first I'm sure the feeding sounds and stuff are gonna actually pull the hyenas in so if not it's been an awesome sighting anyway. Eh? This guy that's just rocked up here, who lives in the neighborhoods here, we've told him there's a leopard there. He says he's asked us to please shoot it because it's killed at least four of his dogs and some of his goats. We said, no, we don't have a permit and it's a female. We can't just shoot leopard and stuff. So, but you can imagine the, the human wildlife conflict that's happening here. I mean, it's just the way it is uh, with an overpopulation of people. They're going to be living amongst the animals sooner or later. We were hoping some hyena would come into the uh, kudu bait we, we put out, but no such luck. We did see a leopard though, which was absolutely awesome to see. We'll wait around here until it's, we can't see anymore. Tomorrow is another day. Hello! Getting prepped up and getting the legs stretched from this morning. So we came back to Addis last night and we've made about a two hour drive this morning out here to an area. They call it the Nile Gorge. Take your breath away, man. <gasps> I'm not a big heights fan. Fixing to take a hike down in here. We'll be looking for a lot of baboon. Um, We've seen some up in the high country, obviously they live in, in the higher elevations, but absolutely one of the most probably stunning baboons there is anywhere in Africa. So um, they only let four permits a year, so it's a pretty limited um, quota. So we'll try to pick out a big male and let Terry be the judge. You'll be glad to know that um, there's no tape <laughs> measure needed for this part of the hunt. As long as it's a big bubble square, <laughs> then we square. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna trust you, judgment, then, bud. Obviously, these baboons are, you know, they're smaller than what they look with all the hair. But you know, the way these baboons feed here, obviously, they come up and they turn over all these rocks, so they're always down, you know, on their haunches with their head forward, down in their chest. And when their head's down, it actually covers up that red spot of the chest, so you don't see anything. Um, and about the time it seems like that their head comes up and they go to move to the next rock and they kind of turn away and walk away. So it's just, it's 
hard to get them to face you, you know, square on and their head up and shoulders high to where you get a clean shot. This is a wildlife area and it is a hunting area and this is where they get the permits for the full gelada, but uh, baboons. But uh, obviously here we're up on top of this escarpment here and you can obviously see in the background there's half a dozen houses, people out, there's cows, everything out in their fields down here. So you obviously want to have a safe, you know, backstop with a bullet because you never know where it's going to end up. So. We obviously, you know, it took a little bit of time to get in position, but uh, we wanted that backdrop to where we had a safe, you know, back zone for the bullet. So you're just on and off the sticks, on and off the sticks, and uh, and just trying to get, you know, a trophy like this on these baboons like this. Um, you want to make sure that you get a rock solid, steady shot, and uh, you know, like Terry was explaining to me, you know, try to hit him in the center of the chest, and that way you get the exit out the back. These baboons have really long hair. I mean, that hair is eight, 10 inches long. And, uh, you know, there's enough hair on the back and the sides there, to, you know, Woodbury to be able to put this thing back together and, and hide, you know, any exit. In between the two big red marks. On these gelato baboons, they've got kind of a, a red heart or a red round spot on top of their chest and it hourglasses down and it opens into another red patch and it just aimed for that center white part between the two red pieces so we were lucky he didn't go over he didn't go over he didn't fall <laughs> from the cliff he's by the edge just right on the edge yeah. i mean that is we couldn't see that from here. I mean, we knew he was close, but obviously not exactly. It's a good job you yeah. just, just wait for proper the killing shot, otherwise yes. you would have gone down there. Yes. They're absolutely beautiful, though. This is the only place in the world you can hunt that uh, Gelada baboon, and they only have four tags a year in the whole of Ethiopia. Eh? After our long drive yesterday, we, we finally made it to the Danical. I think it was about a 12-hour drive. This is Wild, wild west here for sure. In, uh, northeast Ethiopia. I mean, I'm, I live in Africa my whole life, but it's unbelievable to see the conditions that people live in here, man. There is no white man that could ever make it more than a week here. That yeah. big grill. Come here, Ox. I want to see you. We've come from three and a half thousand meters above uh, sea level at the altitude we were at. And I think here yeah, we're about 450 meters. So we've literally dropped 3,000 meters in 24 hours. Wow. It's extremely hot and dry uh, this time of the year. We're probably going to be getting temperatures of the in the 40s, early 40s Celsius. Um, we've got all the stuff that we need this morning. We went and got the local uh, or, or regional game scout. We've got the paperwork done. We're here in the Danical, and there's a little river down there called the Dewe. Um, so there should be some activity along that river and look for, primarily look for Abyssinian bushbuck and lesser kudu. Literally walked from the car towards this river and we've already seen a kudu there. But uh, he's a nice kudu, yeah. no doubt a nice kudu, but we're in an area that typically you're going to see lots of kudu, so I think we should wait. He's very nice, but I think we should wait. We want to try and find something a bit bigger. Okay. For sure, he's a beautiful kudu. Not for today. Check out these things here now. There's camels here. There's a lesser kudu right there. There's people. This place is amazing. Yeah. That guy who's herding these camels obviously got a very high metabolism, built for long distance.
little third camel that we've seen with its front legs tied. We're going to try and find out the reason for doing it, but um, I think it's um, obviously it's easier for the owner to track him um, because obviously the way he walks is going to be easy to notice and uh, he can't go very far. Um, and he thought maybe it was to stop him from climbing onto females because obviously he won't be able to do that if his front legs are tied. Interesting, but we'll try and find out. Sasa, why do they tie their legs? To stay him around, otherwise you will go far. To keep him close, huh? To keep him close, yeah. And it's easier to track now? Yeah, and easier to track him. They could find him easily. We've just been taking a walk, stopping for 10, 15, 20 minutes and looking, walking, looking. Got some kudu now just coming down behind me. Yeah. It's uh, 10 to 3. This place is hot, very hot. It's a pretty kudu, but I mean, for the amount of kudu that we've seen already, I think we can do better than that. Eh? Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's beautiful, but... Um, what do you think, baby? 26, 27? Yeah, probably a little bit more, actually, okay. but... Not for today. countryside here. It looks like it's going to be a hot one today. I don't know, so far in the Danical, the professional hunters haven't been uh, doing very well. <laughs> we have two days of no animals. I told them they've got one more day, otherwise I'm stepping in. This is big, big country. For us Americans, it's kind of, you know, similar to the desert southwest where you just you just got miles upon miles upon hundreds of miles just kind of this little bit of rolling terrain that's obviously got washes in it that you know anything could hide in so trying to find them in this size country can take a bit of luck <laughs> but um, obviously it's still early morning and visibility still good so you can glass but as the mirage gets worse during the day it's, it's going to get harder and harder about 25 past 8. Us. We've got about 10 or 12 of us and obviously stopping and talking to some of the local herdsmen and stuff that got cattle and uh, goats and stuff and try to pick their head and see if you can't get any ideas of where they've last seen some. Oh. Huh? Oh. This goat herd I reckon is just in three, three oryx. Huh? I'm not convinced myself. stops. I see him. Okay. He's about 3.15. Okay. The middle one. Got him. He's 
going to the right, eh? It's even going up the hill, isn't it? No, far right, far right. I think he's 600. He's laid down. Just keep an eye on him. Let's go there. <coughs> we just shot an orc, man. Yes, oh, yes, freaking yes. good job. Well yeah. done. We got him. This is exciting. Right here in the Danico. This is the last species of orcs for me anywhere in the world. So I'm excited to run up there and check it out. So I'm going to head up there now. Then? Thank so. Jeez. Well done, bud. Oh, I'm telling you. Well done. <laughs> hey, you well thank done, you, guys. Good job. Yes. yes. Please look at this thing, man. Oh. Talk about a well earned trophy. And this is the, how, how do you how do you say it? The Basa Oryx? Basa. Basa Oryx. Basa Oryx. Jeez. So, Sai, what do you think? Very good one. <laughs> nice one, huh? Yeah. Nice one, yeah. But I'm just glad you guys were looking and calling, telling me which one. The middle one. The middle one. Because they blend in so well to this, to the sand of the desert here. That's what a 300 wind mag will do for you, so. With Jeez. the right ammo, yeah, too. Yeah, that Swift Rocco hammered him. But I'm just glad you guys were looking and calling, telling me which one. Well done. <laughs> Sommering's gazelle. I believe uh, Ethiopia is the only place you can hunt these. Um, maybe in Somalia and stuff, but there's no hunting there. So if you want one of these, this is the place you got to come to. Yeah, they're beautiful animals, eh? You can just see that they are built for these desert conditions. Yeah, they are. Yeah, wide open places. In a very nice salts tick tick. So we're gonna try and make a little approach here and get him. See how it goes. This is the last one I need, so no pressure on you. Yeah. I'm trying to you try and kill it. Okay. I'll make sure. What a shot! <laughs> Good shot. Well done. Yeah. That's a nice flipping yeah. salt, eh? No, it is a nice one. Yes. Let's go check it out. Beautiful little thing, eh? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Jeez, that's a nice. <laughs> Very nice. Yes. Oh, wow. small, man. Dang. These are tiny, tiny, tiny. tiny, tiny. I always get me too on these is the little. He's blind. He is blind. Yeah, look at him, he's old. This here's the Salts Dick Dick here in Ethiopia. Um, down in Tanzania there, they have the Kirk's Dick Dick, and in Uganda, obviously you have the Gunther's Dick Dick, and in Namibia you have the Damara Dick Dick. 
And this is the fourth and final one that I needed to finish the slam, or all four is what you'd say. So they're all very similar, but they're some of the smallest antelope creatures here in Africa, anywhere in the world. These things are not more than about eight to 10 pounds, really small. So, um, you know, they make for difficult targets. Most of the time you always find a breeding pair together. Um, and basically what you're looking for is as long as you can see horns um, through this tuft of hair that's on the forehead here, then typically that's a pretty good male. Um, obviously, you, you know, here in Ethiopia, we've looked at hundreds of these things. Um, same thing in Tanzania and Uganda as well. Um, and it's just a matter of finding a really old one, maybe broomed off a little bit, um, and then one that, uh, you know, that you like. So it's, um, they're beautiful little creatures. And uh, this is one of the animals I enjoy hunting. There's a lot of these small antelope. Just seen a lesser kudu up here that's worth having a better look at. So we're going to try and uh, sneak up and stalk and have another look and see. Look good from from here anyway. Back of the gap. Fuck, there's a lot of shit down. Did you see him? He's deep. Deep, deep, deep. That deep for sure. Let's go try and see him. Can you see his face? Let's go there. I think Chad made the shot that the only thing you could yeah, see, which was at the base of the yeah. tail going in. Yeah. There so, what a fun hunt. Walk up there and keep yeah. Just go. walk up there in case, uh, in case he gets up. Put one behind the shoulder. Well done, Chad. Yes. I tell you, I mean, that's how big trophies are shot anywhere in the world. But he's, I tell you, Terry LeButt's a hell of a trophy judge, and he's got eyes. It's a Makaraka. <laughs> we've looked at hundreds of kudu, but uh, this bull right off the bat, he's like, we've got to go try to make a plan. So anyway, I'm excited to walk up. I've really hadn't got a great look at him because he's been in some thick brush, but man, what a phenomenal job from Terry and Sisa and the team. So we, they put me in a hot to get a shot. So here we are and uh, we, we made it happen. <laughs> That's a beautiful bull. What a fun way to hunt him yeah, as well, eh? Yeah, yes, is, through the thick stuff, so sneaking right around. He's deep. Right yeah, he is deeper. But, uh, over the last couple of days, Terry has taken on the name of Tape Measure Terry because uh, he really does, he really does go the extra mile to to hold out for a big trophy. And when you pay the amount of money that Chad has paid for for this safari, um, I think it's it goes a long way. And a half. Thirty-three quarters, the short one. So to you, Terry, thank you very much. And to Northern Operations, Sisai, Shield and Spear Safaris. You guys have got great areas, um, great trophy judgment. Good shooting. Holy smokes, it was thick in there. So, uh, yeah, well done, Chad. No, good good team you. effort all around. Yeah, well done. Really thank you.